All right, everybody, welcome to Destination OG in Helen. Uh, I realized, I was thinking about this the other day, uh, you know, I've moved so much and I've been in such a temporary state with all my detailing stuff, both at OGHQ and at home, you know, going back to like 2016 when I had the wash bay, you know, I'd planned to build a garage at that house, but I never really completed it. I always had um, like half tools, half detailing. I never really had a full complete set of everything. And this here, I put a lot of thought, a lot of effort into having a, you know, everything that I use, even though I don't detail as much here, putting everything in one spot uh, hasn't happened in so long. So I figured we'd set, you know, have the camera here. Let me take you through what I think it looks like to have a complete sort of detailing arsenal, not for business, but for personal, like this is what I want personally. And then again, Destination OG is a place that people can come and borrow and, sh and I'm just sort of sharing in the, um, in the experience of what you know, I want my garage to look like. So I'm gonna kind of go through the cabinets, show you all the different things. I'm not talking about tools, just detailing stuff. So uh, this is the interior heavy cabinet. Uh, and so what I have in here is Color Lock Strong Cleaner, and uh, I like to have a 500 milliliter bottle. So this is the foaming version. Uh, so strong cleaner, mild cleaner, uh, and then there's a artificial leather cleaner as well, I believe. Yeah, so there's the artificial leather cleaner, which I like to have for Teslas or you know cars that don't have um, real leather. Um, but I, I like to have a, a one liter bottle and then a 500 milliliter foaming bottle in strong, mild, and artificial and have those three on hand. This is what I use to clean leather. Oftentimes, even just wiping down leather, you know, we'll usually use like, uh, like PNS interior cleaner at times, um, but I prefer to uh, not use strong cleaner, but mild cleaner. I'll just kind of foam it up a bit, put on a rag and use that as a normal maintenance wipe down. Uh, and then you have your protection stuff, which the two most important ones are leather shield and leather, leather protector, artificial leather protector. So shield is the one that I use on all my cars because most of them are new. The leather protector is if your leather is three years or older, then you would, you would start to add this. Uh, so, and I have, this is a bit overkill, uh, but I do have a liter of this as well in my cabinet so I can refill this as necessary. You'll find that this uh, little 250 or 150 milliliter bottle will last you a long, long time. Actually, these are, sorry, these are 200 milliliters, not 500. This is 500, so this is the 500 size, I believe. Nope, one liter. One liter, 150, 200. So we have shield, protector, artificial. You can skip artificial if you don't have any artificial. Um, and then you have artificial cleaner, mild cleaner, strong cleaner. And then uh, here I have four, but generally I would have two uh, of the brushes, the, the color lock brushes that they make for us and we put our, our logo on it, but it's a color lock brush. Uh, so that's the, uh, the leather care stuff. And this will take care of pretty much anything to do with leather. And then I always have a bottle or two of Sonex Alcantara cleaner. On the Alcantara cleaner, I would use the brush. And you've seen me use a steam rune stuff in the past. Uh, but uh, having these, the combination of this sort of left side here is what I think you'd want to have. Uh, but that's the interior stuff, as well as a, uh, having these, I use these all the time, sanding pads for leather, sanding pads for fabric, but I use it mostly for Alcantara, if I'm restoring Alcantara to remove the excess fabric. Um, but oftentimes just to kind of scuff up the Alcantara, it sort of refreshes it. It's a good thing to have. And then the little applicator blocks, which um, we sell as well, these um, for using, doing leather shield, leather protector, and artificial leather. So those are uh, I usually have five or six of those blocks as well. The other thing in here is interior scents, which is, uh, these are okay. Um, they don't last very long. I find that most scents don't last very long. Um, so we have Eden and Bliss from Angel Wax. We import this from the UK. Um, I think that these are two of the better scents. Fruitier, more, I guess, uh, I don't know what, you, what you'd call this one, but it smells a bit different. 
than the uh, than the Eden. Most people like Bliss most. I like Eden the most, but um, these are what we use for interior scent. And then this is the Sledgehammer of Glass Cleaner, uh, Angel Wax Vision. Uh, so I usually keep a bottle of that. It's an ammonia-based, really strong glass cleaner. Like I'll use that when I get a new car. You have a lot of the gases and stuff that you know kind of coat your window with a bunch of funk. And so using this, um, using Vision is uh, the sledgehammer of glass cleaners. And then the glass cleaner I use most of the time, which I have in the Presto bottle there, is invisible glass. We always have a bunch of invisible glass around. I use that to clean TV displays, you know, and pretty much anything, any glass in cars. So then the, uh, the Kush Kemi stuff, somebody asked me the other day in one of the comments that says, well, how come I only see some Kush Kemi stuff? I haven't tried every single Kush Kemi thing, but I've tried some of them. Um, Green Star, I mean, I'm not a big all-purpose cleaner guy. I just don't use a lot of all-purpose cleaner. Uh, but, you know, the Green Star bottle, I like these bottles a lot. So, to be honest with you, I chose this all-purpose cleaner. I know it works well. Um, again, I don't use it much on anything but maybe an engine bay or occasional really dirty floor mat or something like that. Uh, but Green Star is something you'll dilute, you know, generally dilute, you know, somewhere between 5 to 1, 10 to 1, something like that, up to 20 to 1. A lot of people will use, uh, use the all-purpose cleaners on interior. I think that's a mistake. I think you want to use interior-specific products for cleaning interiors, uh, even dirty interiors, because, you know, the, the um, all-purpose cleaner is going to, you know, have a high alkalinity. It's going to dry out leathers and things like that. May not become prevalent in the beginning, but long term could become a problem. Um, you know, again, I probably won't have a car long term enough to matter, but I'm going to use dedicated interior cleaners for that. Uh, Fresh Up is a really cool product. Um, I'll spray this. So I put this in a spray bottle. Um, it smells like laundry detergent, uh, but this is a, uh, a interior sort of odor reducer or odor remover. Oh, I'll put uh, baking powder on the, um, or baking soda on the mats, leave it sit overnight, uh, then vacuum that out, and then hit your, hit your carpets, sort of spray all the carpets with this, and just walk away, and it'll kind of help you remove some of the odor. But I like this FU, Fresh Up is a good product. And then this is the sledgehammer of all sledgehammers for adhesive remover. Be careful with this stuff. Also open up the door, turn the fans on. It's a freaking headache maker. Be careful with around plastics and things like that. It's not nearly as uh, friendly to all surfaces as Tarx is. Um, so having the, a bottle of this, you wouldn't spray this. I don't think you want to aerosolize this. This, um, you just kind of, um, you know, open it, dump it out of the, the pour spout. Um, oh man, I shouldn't open that up but the UX is pretty nasty. But I usually have a bottle, having two bottles of that probably doesn't make sense. This one liter bottle will likely last you the rest of your life. I do have Pearl. We keep Pearl. Uh, lots of people use Pearl. I, I, I guess when I run out of Meguiar's Hyper Dressing, which has become nearly impossible to get, I would use this on engine bays, usually on plastics. We've kept Pearl in the store. I have keep Pearl in the cabinet. I probably won't use it very much, so I may, I may get rid of Pearl because I think you know, our tire dressing is much better than this. Um, so it's still in the cabinet, but probably making its way out. Tarex is one of the most used products. So Tarex and uh, Invisible Glass are two of the most used products I use all over the house. This is discontinued, uh, so um, we're trying to, we, we may have a replication of this. Um, Meguiar's is discontinued, so you won't see it in the store. But this is for removing gunk off of uh, plastic, specifically polish. If you get some polish on porous plastic, this helps get it out with a brush. Uh, this Invisible Glass, because Invisible Glass doesn't sell a gallon. They only sell five gallons and, and 30, uh, 16 ounce, 32 ounce. So this, I really won't use in their sprayer. I just use this to refill my, my press hole bottle. Uh, Wise Guy, so this is uh, what I'm using. Uh, like I used this on the Raptor the other day. Uh, so if I need something more aggressive than Brake Buster, uh, I still don't feel the need to have iron removers. If I do, um, I'll just grab the, the Iron Buster, kind of spritz it um, and uh, on, on wheels. But this is for when I need something heavier, specifically on rubber. Uh, I'll usually use this 50-50 and use it on rubber tires if it's a nice restorative thing. Uh, and then if I'm going to do and prep the tires, 
uh, and then I'll use uh, Stoner's uh, Tarminators. Tarminator is what I use to prep tires. Something magical about the oil or whatever residue is left behind tends to help ex your tires accept tire dressing. And we probably need to get rid of this clarity. Um, we've kept it in the store, it's okay. It tends to get a little smeary. It's good for um, to put in your washer fluid area for freezing climates because it will help with, uh, with freezing. Uh, whereas normally I'll put N914 in mine because I don't have freezing issues. Um, just something, something to consider. So that's some interior stuff. Uh, this here is where we have coatings and bike cleaning. So um, I like to have this in my cabinet. I use this stuff all the darn time. You know, I'm oftentimes coating some new aftermarket part I got, or of course detailing a car and, and recoating it. So we have crystal serum light, and I usually have a couple of bottles of this. You need to be careful with overstocking coatings because they do have a shelf life. Uh, even unopened, they have a shelf life. Um, they'll start to actually you know, congeal or whatever. They'll start to harden. And then it's, if you ever see any white gunk in it, I don't see any in here. It's getting close. So if you see anything in it, then you know that it's, um, it's time to, to get rid of. Uh, so I'll usually have like a leftover bottle. I generally won't use a leftover bottle on the paint, but I may use it on trim or something like that. You know, something that doesn't matter as much. So I always have Crystal Thermite, always have Exo, uh, always have Deluxe and Gliss. I mean, many of us car guys, especially if you have two, three, four cars, you're constantly getting new wheels and things like that. So it's great to have these on tap. Uh, and then I always have a, a bottle of Wolf's uh, Nano Glass Sealant as well. Uh, Halo, I haven't been using very much. Um, I need to talk to Rob about it and what testing they've done. Halo doesn't really work very well on the new Expel films. Uh, and um, so I don't know if they've done any additional testing, if there's a revision. Uh, so I haven't been using Halo very much, but I usually have a bottle of it in the cabinet in case I you know, had a PPF that I wanted to coat. I always have a bunch, at least, at least 10 of the suede applicators. You know, I bought, Tommy and I just did this the other day, or uh, the last six months, I bought one of every, you know, micro, uh, rag company, um, uh, microfiber um, or auto fiber. Uh, I've done a lot of playing with some of the other types of applicators, and I keep coming back to the old CarPro block and suede applicators when I'm doing coatings. Not the most efficient speed-wise, but I find it to be the best applicator still, so that's what I use. Still have Colonite uh, and Power Lock, and then an applicator pad. Yellow for Power Lock, red for Colonite. Um, you never know when you're gonna need that. And then I have Metal Coat, which is good for exhaust, any kind of metal, metal stuff. And then the Dr. Beasley stuff. If you're going to do matte car care, so most of you don't need this. So if you have a, a frozen BMW or you have a matte Lamborghini or something like that, uh, my advice, the company that's done the most work, the most research, the most testing and come out with, I believe, the best products for matte car care is Dr. Beasley's. So instead of you trying to reinvent the wheel and screwing it up, um, I would highly suggest just adopt their, which is rare for me, if I had a matte car, I'd probably start chasing more and try to find the best products for each application. I doubt that Dr. Beasley's makes the exact best product for each part of the process. But unless you're willing to put your car up for guinea pig use, then I think that, um, I think that you should just adopt theirs, their process. The other good company would be Swiss Vax. It's done a lot of matte car care products. And then because I plan to get some mountain bikes up here, um, I do have the, uh, the G-Technic bike care product line. Um, they put in a lot of effort into it. This is another cop out for me. I'm sure there's some best in category products for bike care uh, here and there, but um, this is the stuff that I use when I bring my mountain bike up to clean it. They have their bike ceramic, they have their prep, and some of it's repurposed products, some of it's bespoke products for bike care, um, but I like to have that in the cabinet. I have this at home, I have it here, and um, I don't have it at OGHQ because you know, I'm not generally not cleaning bikes at, at HQ. Then we get into the more sophisticated detailing stuff into polishing. And again, this isn't just for Helen. This is what I would suggest if I were you, if you're gonna be polishing cars occasionally, build your arsenal of pads and then replace. 
So I like to have a dozen, wait, how many do I have here? I have a little bit extra because I sent some extra here. But I like to have 12 white pads. We have a seven inch pads or, or six inch pads, five inch pads, three inch pads, two inch pads, and then one inch pads. Um, I never use the, the bigger pads and I don't even have a machine here. I don't think I even have an LHR 21 here because I never use it. Uh, maybe we do. Okay, that's why I did this. I, I still sell these because lots of people, yeah, we do have a 21, so we will keep the big pads here. That's right. But at home and at HQ, I don't have the bigger pads because I don't use them ever. I feel like, you know, if I was doing a lot of trucks and things like that, I'd probably go to adding a bigger pad. Uh, but for, for most applications, most of you, you're probably gonna do the, you know, the 15, 15 millimeter. We'll get into the machines in a minute. So white foam from Rupes, yellow foam. I'm generally gonna keep, in most cases, two to one yellow, or you're gonna, see, you're gonna use probably three, four to one yellow to white. Uh, white is good to have for some really, really soft paints when you're finishing, uh, but generally speaking, yellow is a little bit easier to manage and you usually get a little bit better finish, I find. Then we have yellow and blue wool. Great, great pads to have. I'm still using Meguiar's. I'm about to make the transition to the new Rupes pads. I feel like they're, they're a little bit better. Then we have um, a Lake Country one inch and two inch microfiber cutting pads as well. And so you keep the, keep the, the four sizes. Two inch I'm rarely using, but you can use two inch on the PXE80 uh, Flex and on the, on the Rupes Nano. Most of the time I'm gonna do four to one. I'm gonna use four times more one inch pads. But my suggestion would be to have 12 of each. Pick your size, LHR 21 or LHR 15. So I, I would recommend the 15 millimeter machines. Uh, and I would recommend that um, you have 12 of each. So 12 of each pad, you can then um, replenish as needed. Uh, and I don't feel like you, you're gonna blow out the pad anyway, so I feel like you can open them up and put them in the cabinet. Some people obsess about keeping their towels sealed and all of that, I don't, I don't, it's not like I'm blasting dirt in here or anything like that, so I, I don't feel the need to do that. So then polishes, cut max, Jessica correction compound, perfect finish. And in here I have two of each, but generally I have a one liter and a 250 milliliter or eight ounce bottle. Um, so I have heavy cut, medium cut, finishing. Keep it simple, you know, I feel like you don't need 50 different types of polishes. There is one addition that will be coming here uh, and it's coming into the line. It's the Rupes Blue Course. Uh, I kind of put that in between Cut Max and, and Jess Car. Just depends on the paint system. Um, of course, you could always manipulate any of these polishes by using a little more, a little less, blowing out pads a little bit more. Um, I do like to have several different compounds depending on, I just find it easier to, than to trying to manipulate the polish. I'm going to just use a different polish that's already been manipulated. Uh, and so that way I can get a consistent result. And so we will be adding Rupes Blue Course. I have uh, Coach Kemi, um, uh, their, their um, clay. I don't use clay very, very often because most of the time we're gonna use auto scrub, uh, but I do have a, a thing of clay always just in case. Sometimes you need it for something, wheels or something like that, something that, that needs, to be, needs to be cleaned up. Then we have the auto scrub. Um, I like to have you know, one of these. This is the six inch pad. I never put it on the machine. I always just put it on, on my hand and then doing the uh, one inch as well. A little sponge, a little, well, I guess, two inch sponge or whatever size they call it. And always fine. You don't need anything more aggressive than fine. Um, they do have a medium version, uh, but I find that if you're gonna do this synthetic wool or this synthetic um, clay, then I think, um, I think Nano Skin makes the best version. Uh, we have eraser, which um, I normally don't have in here. It's in a bottle over there. I'll show you in a minute. Metallic cut is um, the metallic paint and uh, or metallic or metal polish. Gosh, I'm stuttering here a lot. So having some metal polish, um, I just use this for exhaust tips and stuff like that when necessary. And then we have quarter inch. So you only need one of these. You very rarely use this on some expansion joints and stuff like that. But quarter inch one inch and two inch. Uh, this is a 3M Precision uh, tape. 
Uh, I've tried all different types of tape. This is the, you know, the, the, the Japanese uh, version of, uh, what do they call it, Konami tape or something like that. Um, so this is made in Japan. It's, um, I think, the best tape for masking, uh, for polishing. And 3M Precision, I've tried a bunch of different versions. 3M Precision seems to be, to be the best, best of it. So then lighting. In a perfect world, I don't use every one of these lights every time, uh, but this is what I have uh, in my cabinet, and I'm grabbing different lights for different applications. If you want a flashlight, we have these in the store. The PD, PD um, uh, this is the PD35. I think they're on version 3.0 now. Uh, but the PD35 from Phoenix is a great light to have. I find that now with the improvement of uh, scan grips, uh, the Milwaukee light, uh, I don't find that I'm using this nearly as often. I used to use this all the time in paint correcting, uh, but the lighting availability has become much, much better. But I usually have that. I have a couple of extra batteries, um, and then I'll use this when the power goes out. Uh, but, but it is a nice, really great flashlight to have. It's like a hundred bucks. It's something that you'll use for different things. I don't know how much you'll use it for detailing anymore with the advent of some of the better lights. The Milwaukee light, um, I, there, there's advantages, there's pros and cons to this versus the, uh, the scan grip versions. So you have the mini match and then the sun match. Uh, this actually has now been replaced, so I probably need to swap these out. Um, so this one is, now we're on the sun match four, this is the sun match three, the mini match is still current. Uh, but notice the difference, the convexity of the lens versus the flatness of the lens. So I find that the Milwaukee light is, you know, the battery is better, the battery life is better, the ability to swap the batteries is better, the ability to change the color temp modes is better, um, it's a more durable, more solid light, um, it has a better warranty, I mean pretty much everything about it is better with the exception of it doesn't do well, as well off axis, tends to shine in your eyeballs and blind you. Um, and generally when you're inspecting paint, you're gonna kind of come at it and follow the light from a distance. Uh, so the Milwaukee light is better for like straight on viewing. So if I was inspecting this, I would look at it this way instead of, because I'll, I'll tend to shine myself in the, in the, in the face and you kind of, you need the convexity of the lens. I've told them that, that if they can put a convex lens on top of this, it'd be much, much better. But they've, unlike other Milwaukee lights, they've actually put a really high quality LED on this with some really, really um, high quality color accuracy. It's a high CRI type of, type of uh, LED versus all the other Milwaukee lights are pretty junky. Now the scan grips. I think if, you, if I'm picking one light out of the three, I'm going to pick the Sun Match, and the new Sun Match has the, uh, has the diffuser on it as well. Um, but this light uh, has the top light and the side. But I like having, having these, you know, having all of them. These also have a magnet on them, which is nice to have. Uh, Milwaukee has a magnet on the top, which I'm not sure what good that's going to do you, but it does have a, a magnet that, on that side. So these for heavy inspection, um, the pen lights as well are nice to have. You never know when you're going to need it. So the, um, the, the match pen R, uh, it would be the preference uh, versus the regular match pen. Um, apparently I need to uh, swap the battery in this one. That is the disadvantage of this versus this one. This is a chargeable one versus this you have to just replace the battery. So clearly I need to do something about that. So these are also nice to have because I can walk around with it in my pocket, a little bit more um, portable than these. Again, we're getting into overkill here, but if I have the choice, I'm gonna choose to have one of each of these in my cabinet. This isn't every light that exists, but it's every one that I really like. Headlamp for doing projects, mainly on the interior. The Sunmatch R, uh, which is, or I'm sorry, the uh, this this is the multi match R yeah multi match R uh, is nice to have uh, and then the line lights I'm telling you if you want any light not for, so much for detailing but just for any kind of work in the garage these things are freaking great man there's there's line light line light R and then there's the line light C plus R for the underhood uh, but these things are freaking great I like all three sizes. And then these are my workhorse lights, not as high a quality CR, the, the CRI isn't as good, um, but these are the more durable lights that I'm using for working on a car. They tend to get kind of greasy and beat up. 
Um, so a combination of line lights and the little work lights are, are nice to have. So having a charging area where you can charge these up is, um, is I think, a smart thing to do. So I have this set up at HQ. I have the same setup of lights here in Helen, and then I will have the same set of lights at home at, uh, at the, the Darlington garage as well. A lot of money in lights. The other two lights I have, which are, you'll get into overkill, are the big, um, uh, what are the models of these now today? Yeah, multi-match three and multi-match six? No, nine. I think this is the multi-match nine. <sighs> Eight, God, I'm an idiot. So these are for when you're doing lots of pain correction. Unnecessary to have all of them unless you're kind of doing this for a living, you know? So if I was doing this for a living, I would work my way to having multiples of all of these lights, just depending on how sophisticated of a correction you're working on. Then here we have some gallon replacements and charging. Uh, so I have a charging setup for, we have some batteries for the cameras, but charging for nanos, charging for the flex, I have a, a gallon of tire dressing, a gallon of drying aid. Here I've got you know, multiple gallons of each. Um, yeah, but I like to have a gallon of everything. So a gallon of panel wipe, gallon of eraser. Uh, we keep a couple of gallons here. So we run out of, you know, in a perfect world, you have two gallons of each. When one gallon runs out, you buy another gallon. It's just, uh, I think, the, the, the way to do it. Then we have um, the nanos. So short neck, long neck. If you have to make a choice, buy the long neck. That's your first choice. If you don't have to make a choice, have a short neck and a long neck. If you're a real snob, like I've become, have a short neck with DA on it, have a short neck with rotary on it, have a long neck with DA on it, and a long neck with rotary. So you have the quads, I call it. <laughs> it's the quad machines. I don't have that here in Helen, uh, but I do have that at HQ. Uh, so that way I don't have to switch the heads. You know, that's the goal. So we have 21 millimeter Milwaukee, 15 millimeter Milwaukee. Uh, I'm very rarely using the, um, the Rupes stuff anymore. Um, I find myself using the Milwaukee. I think that we may make the transition here at some point. And I'm probably gonna eliminate the Flex, the Flex XF, XFE. Um, so we'll probably be pulling this out of the cabinet and selling this off. The XFE um, uh, 15 uh, is the cordless that's now been, become completely obsolete because of how much better the Milwaukee is. The Flex just doesn't have any torque. You have to run it at full speed and it's still underpowered. It does the job well, but not nearly as well as a Milwaukee, so that this will go away. PXE80 is the one inch, three inch Flex. We have the XFE7 which is the, uh, the power, the, the corded version of the uh, three inch from Flex. I have the three inch Rupes. I prefer the Flex over the Rupes. And then we have the three pneumatic machines. This, this is the, the, the awesome, this, the, uh, this is the, uh, sorry, this is the, um, the triple action machine, the gear driven. If I have a choice, you want the, uh, you want this guy, which is a freaking awesome machine. So this is the LHR 15, 15 millimeter pneumatic polisher. Not as much torque as the triple action version, uh, but it's, this is the one you want. This one is smooth as silk. It's really awesome for when you're polishing car. You just need an, an ample compressor in order to use it. Then LHR 21, LHR 15, and LHR 75, so the corded Rupes version. If you're gonna have you know, if you're going to have the, um, oh, the other thing I need to get here is the HLR 75, which is the new Rupes uh, three inch. I'll write that down to make sure we, we bring that here for people to use. So in my cabinet, if I had to have just one, one or one grouping, I would have 15 millimeter Milwaukee, long neck Rupes, and then the new HLR 75 from Rupes three inch. Just go full battery here. Yeah, we're ready for it. I have, again, gallons of everything. I have extra press all bottles. Um, so we have all our gallons here so that we can refill. Again, I have two gallons of everything uh, with the exception of Green Star. I only have one gallon because I don't use a lot of that. I only have one gallon of the Matt Care stuff as well. So then in 
kind of working through uh, detailing stuff. You want some, um, I need to get some tool grid here, but I think you definitely want a Tornador and I think you want a Prevost um, plastic tipped blowout tool. Now, these are the ones that we carry, so I have all of these in the store. So if you're looking to build your little the blow off tool line, it, all of these have their individual purposes. Uh, but if you're only going to have two, I would have these. So these are the S1 ones, the S1 versions that fit the S1 couplers and just are super smooth. Uh, and then, of course, you have your long handle if you're trying to blow out something weird. Um, the metal stuff. I, I try not to use the metal things around cars because you know, you'd rather use a plastic tip just in case you, you hit it and the blowing out pads are going to use this. So then we have um, flex vacuum. Um, even though we have the on-wall one, I kind of like having the flex. We use it for certain applications. Maybe I'm out in a driveway or something like that and my, my um, hose doesn't reach. Flex vacuum, they no longer make this. So we're looking for a new version, a new option, but um, having a, an awesome air compressor like this, this is the, um, the VX Silver 3, which I don't know if they're no longer making it or where there's no longer importing it, but we're gonna have to find something else. Listen how quiet that thing is. Operates at like 50, 59 decibels. Pretty awesome for an air compressor. Then we have our power and air in two locations here that covers the whole garage. I have um, buckets, so the OG bucket package. In my bucket, I have, oh shoot, where are these things? Some our cleaners must have washed them. We don't need to wash that. But we have our, our uh, two different wheel um, tools. So this is the uh, Increta pad. I'll put these back on. And this is the Increta, um, we put the Increta pad on the um, Detail Factory version. Have Easy Detail, Easy Detail, Detail Factory tire brush, and the lambskin mitt from uh, Flexi Pads. That's what's in my wheel bucket. Shorty with the ultimate hose nozzle, um, but we have the shorty version of our bucket filler just because of how we designed this garage. So this is a 12 inch version. Normally you do 24 inch P114 prior hose bib. And then we have all our different chemicals. So let's see if I can do this. So Iron Buster from PNS. This is our, what we call a tire cleaner, which was our um, shine supply wise guy, diluted 50-50. This is rust inhibitor, so this is the um, uh, Hyde Serum Rust Stopper. This is um, a PNS Brake Buster for wheels and tires. OG Drying Aid. Uh, rinseless Wash is a, this rinseless would be a 120, or no, 256 to 1 N914. PNS Interior Cleaner, FU, Kosh Chemi, so fresh up. This is our Kosh Chemi Green Star. Uh, I think we have it probably diluted 10 to 1 here. Uh, glass cleaner is uh, Stoner's, uh, Stoner's Glass Cleaner. Uh, eraser, copper eraser. Then we have this at, that doesn't look right. Yeah, that's definitely not right. It's more than 128. Yeah, yeah, so we'll have to, that looks like straight. Um, so we'll have to fix that. But this should be, um, this should be 128 to 1. Uh, and then waterless wash should be 128 to 1 as well. Uh, so this is N914, 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 just diluted a little bit differently. Uh, paint sealant, we don't have anything in here because we don't have a paint sealant. Plastics dressing would be Car Pro Pearl, diluted, I think, 5 to 1. Uh, OG tire dressing, this is uh, surface prep, and then the old infamous Tarex, which will leach through the bottle and the labels always fall off. And then we have the OG pressure washing system, uh, OG hose, OG Mosmatic, uh, awesome um, um, couplers, the uh, T304 stainless made in Switzerland. We have our, um, our PP plug, the test garage PP plug. Then a custom black Cox hose reel, a 100 series hose reel with a custom, I need to take the sticker off, of the um, uh, stainless swivel. Krenzla. This is the original version, yeah. So Krenzla uh, K1122 TST, 
uh, with all of our custom install um, package. So you can buy this package with one exception. We have a valve here because this is going out to the boom pole outside, which most of you won't have. Uh, but this is the custom install pressure washer setup with the OG spec Mosmatic gun and wand, uh, OG spec uh, tips with the Swiss OG spec uh, Mosmatic fittings with the Mosmatic wand holder. Last setup is over here. So I'm keeping gallons of soap. So I have OG decon soap for deconing, reset for resetting coatings, and then our normal wash, which is Carpo GSF. I'm experimenting with the possible addition of adding in um, a snow foam from Bill Hamber. So adding those in. And then we have towels to kind of wrap up our, our detail, detailing arsenal. Having a reach and clean tool is a good thing to have for windows. Um, there also should be a brush in there, but this is a um, detail, no, not detail factory. I forget which version. If we have these in the store, why is it? It'll come back to me later. And have a, having an extra of each. I'm gonna put these back on our products here. You don't really need to wash these, but you can, you can wash them. And then I have the detail factory. I'm doing using this. This is the, uh, the curveball, which we're using for applicating or applying an applicator for tire dressing. Uh, this P21S polishing soap is great for uh, when you're not using metallic cut, but great for doing um, uh, cleaning up exhaust tips. The brake buster and a foam cannon. We've got GSF. I got N914. I've got all of the 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 version of the uh, Marilex sprayers. Just good to have. Um, sometimes I'll use those. Race glaze. Uh, yeah, race glaze. This, this is a race glaze brush. Race glaze XL. Then towels. Um, so large drying, wheel cleaning and drying, um, extra large drying. I have mitts and the Incredipad XL pads. We have pluffles, which I'm using for waterless washing. Um, these are multi-purpose towels, which I'm using just to clean anything. Drying, so this is the twist loop version of the drying towel, so I use one of these and one of these when drying. Glass cleaning, interior cleaning, wiping off coatings, wiping off coatings, polish and polish removal. And then we've got the, um, the uh, Ego 580, which they're about to discontinue with the blower band and the um, uh, Apex Air stubby. And, uh, and then I have the Ego Light as well, which I like having because you never know when you're going to need that. So that is sitting on the bottom here. I didn't realize we have three hose reels. That's right. Three sets of hose reels. And the last thing which is coming here very shortly is our new OG spec um, um, on-wall vacuum system. It's going to operate at somewhere around 56 decibels with the muffler system and the interior padding that we're doing. We're going to have a 30 amp version, a 110 30 amp, and a 110 uh, 15 amp version. Uh, and uh, we're going to test the 30 amp version, see if it's worthwhile. Uh, that one will be quite a bit louder, uh, but we're going to be having full solutions with hide hose and stuff like that. So this is, this is coming as well. So that's everything that I have in my detailing arsenal. Last thing is the source garage stand that's up on top uh, for doing wheels. Um, I think that's all I can think of for what I would have in detailing. If you take the pressure washer and the vacuum out of the equation, you know, I think you're probably somewhere around 10,000 bucks worth of stuff um, that we have in order, to, uh, in order to detail the way I like to detail. Um, there's quite a bit of overkill, quite a bit of redundancy, but if you're pursuing, if you're, if you're chasing like I have been, a complete end-to-end -end solution for detailing without extra, so I don't, I don't have a lot of, there's some extra lights, but there's nothing in this setup that I don't use. Um, here we're showing you all the polishers, so there are some redundancy in polishers. Generally it'd have two, you know, three or four polishers. Um, but uh, everything in here is product that we're using and using regularly. You know, otherwise I try to eradicate or take it out of the system uh, and keep it to a minimum. But this is a curated grouping of products from all over the world, all different types of manufacturers making it. Uh, it's what my current love is. I love everything in this package or everything in this, in this, in this, um, this garage, if you will. 
Uh, and who knows, you know, this will continue to change. That's what you guys are paying me for to continue to chase and find, you know, some of the best stuff in the world. I don't know if this stuff is the best, probably isn't in each category, but it's pretty darn good. And if it isn't the best, you know, we're, uh, we're chasing, chasing the best. So that's, that's the goal here. Anyway, hit up obsessgarage.com, hit up uh, destinationobsessgarage.com if you're interested in coming. You can come here and use all this stuff, immerse your stuff for a week uh, or as many weeks as you want. I guess you could probably talk me into renting it for a month if you wanted to. Uh, but you come here, bring your car, rip the roads, and come here and use all this stuff. Try it out, figure out what you want. Uh, and then, of course, it'd be nice if you bought it from us. So anyway, thanks for watching. Lots of detailing stuff coming this spring. Um, I have lots of plans to do. We're gonna start wash and drive, uh, wash and talks. We'll continue to do lots of those, testing all different kinds of products and uh, continuing to pursue that, that ultimate curated solution. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. We'll uh, see you on the next detailing video. See you soon.